That guitar oh, solo indeed. right in front of the Queen Victoria statue. Absolutely. And you could hear Queen Victoria saying, ah, <laughs> I don't approve of this kind of thing. Anyway, into the collective, I think we have uh, the sound of the pub uh, there. Sister Susie is in place, I think. I am. Uh, what, and uh, what is our, what is our uh, drink of the day, Susie? Well, I'm wearing orange today, so it reminded me of an Aperol spritz. So maybe one of those. Okay, I don't, what does that taste like? It's like a, it's an Italian bitter um, and soda and Prosecco. So it's okay. sweet and sour, tasty. Okay, Very sounds nice. lovely. Says Matt, <laughs> not through, through gritted teeth. Mm. Anyway, that's our drink of the day. Very good. So, uh, <laughs> Brother Matthew, Sister Susie, in position. Uh, today's confession comes from Nigel. Can I say this uh, has a 12 certificate and oh. don't do any of this at home. Okay. Also, <laughs> oh, what no. on earth is Nigel playing at? Right. You'll, you'll think. Okay. A number of occasions. Father Simon, Brother Matthew, Sister Susie, I come on bended knee asking forgiveness for an incident that occurred when I was 14 going to senior high school somewhere in County Armagh back in the 1980s. As you know, back then, you went to different classes in school, each one in a different place. So on this day, we left our maths class and headed to our next one, which was chemistry. You should know that the master, our chemistry master, Sigismund Arbuthnot, was very strict. <laughs> As you would be if you were called Sigismund yes, Arbuthnot. Arbuthnot yeah. So we all piled into his class, meeting the other class on the way out. This was always the way with the experiments because they always ran over and no one ever got time to really clear up after themselves. So on this day, my cousin and our two mates sat down at the large square chemistry tables. I sat facing my cousin while my two other mates sat facing each other. Then Mr. Arbuthnot, the master in charge, asked us to turn around and face him, take our books and pens out and set them on the table. Now, at this time, everyone had a habit of biting on the end of their pens, which we all thought was a cool thing. I mean, I just think it's something that people do. Yeah. It's not really a trend. But anyway, we were rebels, Father Simon. <laughs> you okay. Biting on your pens. Yeah. So he started the lesson, and there's me chewing on my pen, not having a care in the world, when the master asked us to open our books. So I placed my pen on the desk and proceeded to whatever page he told us to go to. The lesson continues. I lift my pen back to my mouth about to give it a good chew when all of a sudden my mouth starts to crackle just like the packets of space dust you used to buy but this was not in a nice way do you remember having space yes, dust yes yes i do pour it in your mouth and it used to yeah, pop yeah 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 okay no this was a very bitter taste and a sudden numbing of my tongue and i took my pen from out of my mouth when i placed it on the table i had somehow got mysterious crystals on it and they had stuck to the top of my wet pen from all the chewing these must have been crystals that had not cleaned up by the previous lesson oh. and now they were in my mouth oh dear Ugh. this is where the panic starts crystals were going off in my mouth my tongue was getting number and number by the minute and honestly I thought it was swelling up and I tried to get my cousins and other mates attention but they were facing the teacher very strict in Mr Arbuthnot's lesson and you had to be as quiet as a church mouse even if your mouth was on fire <laughs> Okay. So here's me thinking I'm actually about to die. But what am I what am I going to do? So in a fit of panic, I noticed that all their pens were lying beside their books too. So I did the only thing a dying 14-year-old would do uh, and trying not to raise a fuss because you knew the master had a very short temper, I simply rubbed all the tops of their pens in the crystals on the table as well. Oh right. Now I have to say I'm not okay. I'm not proud of this, Father Simon, but I was thinking that if we all have the same reaction, they might shout out to the master and I might have a better chance of surviving. <laughs> so I did this praying that one of them would disturb the class, not me after all because I was actually dying. Yeah. I watched as my cousin and his two close friends bit down on their pens waiting to see if their reactions were the same if not worse suddenly the panic stepped in there as one of them leapt to his feet while the other two started to squeal like pigs as they bitten down on something very vile which in all honesty they had done precisely that as this happened the master screamed uh, <laughs> he was from county armagh but he's uh, just right gone, here we go what the hell is going on here no it's just a uh, standard right. standard <laughs> voice <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. I mean, I had a triumph a few weeks <laughs> ago, you but did, yeah. What you? the hell is going on here? My mate, who had jumped to his feet, started spitting and sticking his tongue out at the master, and the other two followed suit. But this 
by this time, my mouth had started to subside and I no longer thought I was in mortal danger. So I sat there and said nothing while the other three were dragged up to the front of the class and told in no uncertain terms to wash their mouths out with a simple antidote called water. After having a stern telling off by the teacher and told to sit down and not interrupt his lesson again. My three mates returned to their chairs very sheepishly, asking each other how had this happened and why didn't the teacher take it seriously? At this point, I should tell you, Nigel told me what the crystals were, but I thought... No. The responsible thing to do is just not to mention Correct. anything yeah. like that. Yeah. It turns out, says Nigel, he knew exactly what the crystals were, being the master, of course, chemistry and yeah. everything, and he knew the boys weren't in any danger. He didn't think to explain why as he was more annoyed by being interrupted in class. My cousin proceeded to still be a, a little bit miffed at this point, only stopping to ask how I hadn't got anything on my pen. And my reply was that I had placed mine inside my book, as you can't be too careful coming into these chemistry classes. Yeah. So, Father Simon, I've carried this with me since I was 14, and now I'm 54, and I feel it's time to ask forgiveness. I don't want my cousin wondering why he and my other two mates got the blame for something that was beyond their control and that I actually sat there pretending I was completely innocent. So please, in your heart of hearts, can you forgive an older and wiser man who just wants to see his cousin have closure on something that saw him and his two friends shouted at for something that was all my fault? Well, actually, it was, to be honest, it was the crystal's fault, and he, it wasn't yeah. exactly his nice fate. Yeah. It, wasn't, it, it wasn't his fault that the crystals were on no. the pen in no. the first place. Anyway, asking for forgiveness so I can get on with my life, says Nigel. P.S. I'm now living in Spain, so I thought it was safe to confess all. Uh, anyway, uh, Sister Susie, what do you make of, of that from Nigel? Well, Nigel, now... It, I guess it wasn't your fault in the first place. You didn't leave the crystals there. That was probably the class before who hadn't cleaned up properly. Correct. However, the issue that I have with Nigel here is that he really thought he was going to die. And rather than ask for help, right. he then <laughs> put it on his two mates as well. That's not fair. I mean, different times, thought... but why, why didn't the teacher sort of react in a slightly shocked <laughs> way that, that someone's mouth had gone numb and they, exactly. were, they, they could clearly feel this stuff in their like, mouths? He might have been strict, but I'm not sure he wanted you to actually be hurt. So I'm sure he would have been understanding. But however, I can't do it because you did it to your friends. Can't forgive you because you thought you were really hurt. And then you just put it on two other people. Nigel. Brother Not Matthew. forgiven. Um, I'm going to forgive on two counts, really, because I remember getting told off for putting my pen in my mouth uh, when uh, uh, when I was a, a pupil. And and I thought, what's the worst that could happen? It turns out the worst that could happen is it'd be coated in, in crystals that we don't understand. And your mouth goes numb. And, it, and your mouth goes numb for a little bit. And then everything's fine, because you can wash it out. So that's it. I, if that's as bad as it was going to get, no problem. And the other the other reason is, surely this would have been an opportunity for uh, Dr. Or or whatever, to, uh, to to say, well, this is how these crystals react when in the human mouth. Let's oh. see in front of us. Yes. And he didn't, did he? <laughs> you need so, to be careful. for that yeah. reason, I choose to forgive. 61054, first word is Simon, for the people's verdict. Do you forgive Nigel, yes or no? Obviously, don't try any of that at home. Don't do it. Don't put no. crystals in don't your mouth it. unless it's sugar or salt, and that's about it. Yeah. Anyway, 61054, first word is Simon, for the people's verdict. Uh, just before the news, we heard from Nigel. Uh, who was at school in County Armagh in the 1980s. And basically, he he put mysterious crystals on his friend's pen yes. so that they too could suffer the agonies of a burning mouth whilst in a chemistry lesson. Don't try any of this at home. No. The only crystals you're allowed are salt and sugar. I'm sure there's some others, but I can't think of any. It's safe just to leave Space it at dust. that. Space dust. Space dust occasionally, if that's, if that's the kind of thing you like. Anyway, the people's verdict is in. What does it say? Most people forgiving. Uh, Matthew Warnham from Wantage says, Forgiven, I thought that's what you did in science lessons. Certainly, when I went to school, perfectly acceptable behaviour. Karen, Maddie and Kate Thompson in Southampton say, forgiven, he was in a teenage state of panic, cannot be blamed for his actions. And Peter Sale from Norwich says, forgiven, it is irresponsible to keep chemicals in a school with actual children. I work in a primary school where the kids lick the tables. So that sounded like an accident <laughs> waiting to happen. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness me. Okay, maybe you have a confession. Maybe it's one from the chemistry lab. Keep it legal, decent and honest. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. And send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. No, stupid. Not that. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> it's a lack of, lack of production from Susie in the park. Yeah, I, think. I thought uh, yeah. so. Yeah, my fault. I think if you'd have just pointed <laughs> at that one rather than that one, that would have been fine. <laughs> What's our drink of the day, Susie? Uh, well, I had a nice glass of Tempranillo last night, so maybe need... I'll What's have that? another one of those. What's that? Wine. 
Oh, right. Oh, okay. It's a wine. Italian. Uh, is that so white? I think it's Spanish. Oh, is it Spanish? Oh, yes. That would be I'm probably the... saying it Oh, wrong. Tempranillo. Oh, Tempranillo. Oh, right, of course. Yeah. What colour was it? Red. Oh, okay. Oh, but it's a very light red, so it's very nice for this time of year. Yes. Okay. How much for a glass? <laughs> I don't know. I don't pay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> oh, it's your part, oh, of course not. Uh, today's confession comes from Chippy Chips Chandler. Uh, thanks, Chippy Chips. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. You call yourself Excellent. anything you like, really. <laughs> Father Simon and the Ever Understanding Collector. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Uh, if you're eating. Oh, right. Chippy Chips. Yeah, oh, Chippy Chips has sent, in, has sent in one, but it doesn't really go well with tea time, okay. dinner, or whatever you want to call it. Father Simon, the understanding clicked. I seek forgiveness for an event that I'm reminded of at least once a week, and considering that it occurred in 1995, that's far too long to be carrying on with this level of guilt. 1995, I worked at a local but upscale pub near Windsor. Upscale food, mm -hmm. upscale wine and beer. Would that glass of wine that you just mentioned, would that count as upscale wine? Yeah, it's a nice Excellent. wine. Okay, I think that's so. the one. Okay, very good. The clientele were well, what you'd expect. On race event days, the pub was filled with men in smart suits and ladies in their finery, all arriving marginally merry and leaving severely sloshed. I liked the variety of customers and always enjoyed their patronage. The proper locals did not enjoy them and would always complain about them taking their favoured seats or drinking too much and being noisy. One such person was Marmaduke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not even trying now, are we? Come on. <laughs> you probably you probably haven't met him, but you've certainly met his type. Yeah. The, the yellow cords kind of chap. Yeah. Mm. Marmaduke was a commercial pilot, and his wife Darcy, former cabin... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Marmaduke and Darcy, Darcy. They're a regular. They're regulars <laughs> at this pub. Yeah. Darcy was former cabin crew who thought she was more desirable to the male patrons than she actually was. <laughs> were constantly complaining. The pub was too hot, the pub was too cold. There's not enough choice of food, there's too much choice. The old days were better, the kids these days. Why are we taxed at all? Short, sharp <laughs> shock is what we need. You get the point, I'm sure. Do you have customers like this, Suze? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Yellow cords? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me just mention here, says uh, Chips, that we just... Uh, the, the pub had cats. Lovely cats, you should know. Warm and affectionate. They're not their names. They're <laughs> kind of cats that they were. Yeah, yeah. They were a bit like dogs, really. Anyway, unsurprisingly, Marmaduke and Darcy hated, and I mean really hated, the cats. They would snarl and pout whenever the cats approached. Marmaduke and Daisy would use curse words that should never be said in public, encouraging the cats to go away. The pub's cats were pampered by everyone else, especially on a Sunday when we would give them scraps from the roasts and even take leftover meat from people's discarded plates to give them during the week, all kept in a specific pot in a different fridge, of course. One Sunday, Marmaduke insisted on having a curry, <laughs> a chicken curry, <laughs> and even though no food was served on Sunday nights, the pub manager wanted to keep Marmaduke happy and asked me to sort out a curry. Well, we had a number of pre-made curries to hand, so it wasn't an issue to bung one in the microwave and add a coriander leaf to the top. <laughs> oh. Because that's what oh. you do if you want to make it. Oh, uh, yeah. Things of the trade. Marmaduke was served his curry, and yes, you guessed it, he complained. <laughs> he said it wasn't spicy enough, and that it, the, the pieces of chicken were not plentiful enough, and he pulled his usual whiny toddler face. If it's possible for a grown man to look like a spoilt toddler, this was Marmaduke this particular evening. I went into the kitchen, I grabbed the chilli sauce and a handful of leftover chicken that I managed to scavenge, stirred it into Mar Marmaduke's curry, microwaved it for a few more minutes, then took it into the bar, complete with another fresh coriander leaf. I was running out of <laughs> coriander leaves at this point. For once, no complaints, and he scoffed the lot. And you can probably guess where this is going. Yeah. I do not seek forgiveness from entitled, oily and slightly creepy Marmaduke. He was a miserable toad who deserved everything that he got okay. on that evening, even though we don't know at this point what he got <laughs> on that evening. No. Father Simon, I seek forgiveness from the pub cats because there was no leftover chicken in the food fridge, so I went looking at the alternative part of discarded oh. meat that we salvaged for the cats' <laughs> midweek dinners. But there was none. I had to collect it from the messy, sloppy cat's bowls oh, that were on the floor, oh, thus oh, leaving them bereft what? of chicken. That's what I put in Marmaduke's curry. Sloppy second vindaloo coming oh, right up no. with probably ground and rendered necks, feet and intestines oh, of a chicken. Oh, lovely. 
<sighs> Father Simon, I see. That's why I gave you yeah, a warning. You did. Yeah. Father Simon, I seek forgiveness. Is whenever I give my cats leftover meat, it reminds me of this particular event. To this day, Marmaduke and Darcy have absolutely no idea of what happened. Well, the voice of responsibility, radio production, <laughs> and pub owner, yeah. Susie in the pub. Well, Chippy Chips, you're giving us a bad name, and, and there's a few reasons why I'm not going to forgive you. First of all, you look after your regulars, because they're the ones that give you bread and butter all through the year, not the people that are just coming in when the races are on. So first of all, you should have been nice to them. Second of all, I don't like pub cats. A pub dog? Yes. Pub cats? No, because they crawl all over the places, and it's just not nice. And, and then giving them old discarded food from the bowl? No! Just no! No! Okay. Not forgiven. Informed, informed words, Brother Matthew. Well, they are informed words, because clearly um, uh, Sister sister Susie knows more about running a pub than I do. However, what I would say is, you know, where else go are on. they going to go? Where are they going to go? <laughs> no one else wants them. Mama Duke and Darcy? No, no not interested. So they're going to come at your pub anyway, so you may as well be serving them uh, leftover cat food with a coriander stick on the top no. of it. So I am going to forgive, because frank, frankly, they had it coming. Mama Why Duke are we Darcy? even taxed? Yes. Yeah. I suspect as soon as I said Marmaduke Mama and Darcy, you oh, decided yeah. anyway, haven't Class you? war. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the question is, do you forgive Marmaduke and Darcy? No, do you forgive Chippy no. Chips Chandler? Let's not get confused. No. Do you forgive Chippy Chips? 61054, the text first word is Simon. You can email Simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Meantime, we had a confession just before six from Chippy Chips Chandler. It involved curry and an annoying couple in the pub called Marmaduke and Darcy. Here's the people's verdict right now. So Mark from Northampton says, Forgiven, I don't like cats. Absolutely no place in a pub. I thought they didn't like being around water. Uh, James and Ian in the Wirral. Forgiven, the cats were probably fully aware of your cunning plan. If they weren't, one probably found out and told the others. Matt's right. He had it coming to him. Uh, Ali the Witch in Dewsbury says, Forgiven, how perfect. Mm -hmm. And Cabbage in his truck says, Forgiven, you should have called it Chicken Meow Mane. Yeah. No, no, that doesn't work. It does That's like work. one of your puns. It's brilliant. Uh, okay, thank you. Your confessions, please. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, and it's confession time, so gather round uh, the wireless. And uh, live from the pub, producer Susie, uh, just checking in with uh, today's latest uh, drink of the day. What are we going for today? Yes, well, I'm actually drinking a peach iced tea at the moment, but you can't get that in the pub, so maybe just a nice cold lager would be nice. Okay, well, and what would you recommend? Um, a nice Czech lager, actually, like a like a bud a bud var. No, well, yeah, like a bud var. Okay, yeah. something well, precisely like a bud var. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly like okay. a bud var. Could you get the round in? That'd actually, be lovely. There? Yeah. Oh, I can do. Yeah. <laughs> Why Excellent. not? Well, today's confession comes from Sadie, um, and Sadie says. I think, I think this will be a good one. Father Simon, brother from the gutter, Matthew, and yep. sister Susie from the pub. My confession concerns a weekend during lockdown when I was working from home full-time. So there's a lockdown... I don't think we've had a locked, specifically That's a lockdown true. confession. Yeah. We had an enthusiastic new boss who, as enthusiastic <laughs> bosses seem to like to yep. do, chose 4pm one Friday to share a good idea in an email. Uh, oh, he wow. want Yes, exactly. He wanted to get a better handle yeah. on what we're all up to whilst working remotely. He suggested we should have a quick look at our online calendars over the weekend. Nothing major, he assured us. We just had to give him an idea of what tasks filled every hour of the working week. We then present our calendars to the group in the following Monday departmental Zoom meeting. Deep joy. Nothing major. Present to the group what a fun weekend lay in store. My online calendar was haphazard, Father Simon, and neglected. Only colleagues' birthdays and just the odd meeting to view, and then only because someone else had set them up. I was happy with my system of sticky note reminders around the edge of my laptop screen, but this wouldn't be suitable for the new boss, obviously. The truth is I didn't actually know how to use my online calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I'd have asked my husband for tips, but he was a key worker away on duty with the Ministry of Defence. I had no choice but to do it myself, and through trial and error and watching many YouTube clips, I had a smart weekly calendar by Saturday evening. My working hours were all accounted for and colour-coded according to tasks or activities. Even more impressively, I had somehow managed to set up a separate family calendar and link the whole lot with my smart watch. Wow. Wow, this is incredible. Oh. 
What could go wrong? I was very pleased with myself and spent some time boring the pants off my family <laughs> on our group chat about how accomplished I was. Nice. So back to my husband working away with only very brief trips home, ships passing in the night we were. On Sunday morning, we glimpsed one another as he collected a clean uniform and I headed out for a run. He had good news, though. He got Wednesday night off, to which my jokey reply was something like, Greg, uh, great, I'll schedule some quality time. <laughs> Wednesday at 7, see you then. We both laughed and thought nothing more of it. On Monday, feeling confident, I joined the meeting with the new boss, same as the old boss, and oh, we all yeah. spent a few minutes going through each other's diary entries for the day. The boss seemed impressed with our weekend's work, although he did ask me to tweak my settings because he wasn't sure he needed to see exactly what my children were up to. <laughs> Not a problem. Lose the family calendar link. This was easily remedied. And as I went into my settings, everything seemed to happen at once. A text arrived from my husband, clearly urgent. Check your online diary now. Did you actually have to do that? In capital letters. Puzzled and... Doing that, trying not to look like you're texting in a meeting thing, I started a reply, but then heard the words, Hey everybody, can I draw your attention to a very special event that Sadie has planned for Wednesday evening? Oh, no. I glanced up at the screen, my boss was grinning. Confused, I scrolled, I scrolled across and down, as did the rest of my colleagues, and there it was, just beyond the end of Wednesday's beautifully colour-coded working day, 7pm. Midweek nookie. <laughs> I was mortified. I was mo mortified and still am writing this out. Father Simon, I perhaps hadn't heard the OK from my smartwatch as I was leaving the kitchen the previous day. But my w I should have said 12 certificates. <laughs> but my words had been registered and my calendar updated. So much for my confidence and newfound expertise. This was awful. <laughs> I'll never forget the sight of a screen full of bosses and colleagues all giggling at me. Nor will I ever live down the stream of group chat messages from my children over the next few days, such oh, no. as midweek nookie, T minus 10 hours. Oh, no. So I'm not asking for forgiveness from my boss or colleagues. It's my ineptitude totally brightened their week. Nor do I ask forgiveness from my children for suggesting that us old people still have a life. As for my husband, I do seek forgiveness for sharing way more information publicly than was actually necessary. I hope the jury will look kindly on me, though I'm fully expecting Matt not to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Love the show very, very much indeed. Nicely done. Nice face. Sadie nice. says uh, thank you very oh. much. So let's see where we go with that one. Sister Susie. Oh, Sadie. Do you know what? I completely feel for you. I, I have also tried to sync up calendars with disastrous effects. Not quite that bad, but it wasn't just your work colleagues. <laughs> it was your children as well. I, you've had enough embarrassment. I completely forgive you. Okay, very good. Actually, and the punchline of that is actually a three-worder as well. That's, that's, the, that's all you need. Brother from another gutter. I mean, obviously, we're going to forgive that, because that's the best laugh I've had this week. That is superb. <laughs> Having your watch remind you that it's time for midweek nookie. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, definitely forgiven. Well done, Sadie. Uh, okay, yeah, forgiven here, but it's the people's verdict. Do you forgive? On the text, please, 61054. You can start your message with Simon. That would be nice. Around about 10 to 6, we had another confession. It was Sadie's confession. A little bit of a technical calendar mishap. <laughs> uh, resulting in that three-worder, which you'll remember, I think, 7 p.m. midweek nookie. And uh, her bosses, everyone she worked with, and her family all saw uh, what was planned. Uh, anyway, the people's verdict is in. Here it comes. Uh, Jenny and Rory from Gloucester say, not forgiven, you never mix business with pleasure. Uh, Mark says, nookie nights instead of boogie nights. Best laugh I've had for a while. Joe says, forgiven, thanks for giving me my best laugh in ages. Wish I was heading home for some midweek nookie. And Paul says, not forgiven. It's not fair that Sadie can book it in. And I work nights. So jealous. So uh, it might be that you have a lockdown confession. Maybe you have uh, a WhatsApp-based confusion or a calendar coordination based confession where everything went belly up. Anyway, we'd like to hear about it. Send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk and if we use it, then you get a smart speaker because that's the deal. Well, it's uh, 14 minutes away from 6 o'clock and you know that that means it's confession time uh, and we go live to uh, the pub where uh, Sister Susie's busy producing things and uh -huh. recommending our drink of the day. What is it going to be today? Um, 
Oh, do you know what? Someone in the pub last night had a margarita, and I haven't had one of those for a long time. So why not have a margarita? It's well, Thursday. Okay, as status quo said, it's margarita time. It so, is. Uh, <laughs> why did, so why don't we do that? Margarita pizza for everybody. Um, uh, okay, so I need to apologise for today's confession. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, for oh, reason no. for reasons that will become very very obvious. Okay. It comes from Gavin. It's family friendly and all that. It's okay. Just, the end of the confession feels a very, very long way away. Okay. Father Simon and the confessional crew, this confession takes me back some 20 years. In fact, after hearing this sorry tale, some listeners should be able to tell you the exact week of 2002 that this relates to. I was working at our local cinema at the time, says Gavin, mainly selling tickets at the box office. During the day, it would be a bit quiet between showings, and we'd often try to find ways to make the time go by more quickly. Reading, chatting, that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, at this, time, <laughs> at this time, there was a young woman working there who'd spent some years growing up in South Africa. Oh, yeah! Although she didn't have any trace of an accent. <laughs> oh, right. A couple of the staff knew that I, like you, Father Simon, could make possible attempts at accents. No, no, no. And possibly partly because she was missing the accent or out of curiosity to see how well I was able to mimic it, she came to the box office to ask if I would humour her with my attempt. There's an awful lot of this, I'm afraid. We spent a while talking. Occasionally she would tell me slang terms and I would throw them into the conversation. Well, during this time, a couple of guys, quite tall and well-built, kind of physique you'd expect on a rugby player, that kind of guy, came in. Without a second thought, I turned from the conversation and I asked, Hi, can I help you, my China? <laughs> oh, wow. It was at this point that I yes. realised that I'm I had off. that I was still in with the South African accent. I was still using the South African accent. Oh, well, never mind, I thought. Maybe they didn't notice, and I'll just use my normal voice next. But this is where things took a turn. Yes, we'd like to see a film. And we wondered, which one is nice? said one of them <laughs> actually in a south african accent uh, he was south right. african yeah mm -hmm. yeah what would you recommend uh, what would you recommend said his mate <laughs> also in a south african accent <laughs> halfway through <laughs> as i saw it i reverted back to my usual accent you know no as i saw it if i reverted back to my usual accent they might see it as me mocking theirs yeah. and I didn't want to argue yeah. with these guys because they were big and they looked as though they could do some damage to me should they choose. I also wondered that if my South African accent didn't pass muster that a similar angry beefcake scenario may play out, Father Son. I have to admit that I decided to go on with it and keep up the pretense. <laughs> oh, good, of course good. he did. I asked the kind of films that they were looking to go and see and I gave them a brief description of a couple that I'd enjoyed that week. They bought tickets and they went off to buy drinks and snacks. I think they were too far away to hear it when I let go a huge sigh of relief. After the film had ended, they came out briefly to thank me as they'd enjoyed it and then they made their way out. Phew. The next day they came back. <laughs> Oh, so as no. soon as I saw them in the foyer, luckily with very few other people around, I readopted the South oh, African accent. No. They asked me to run through the other films. <laughs> make their, they made their choice and they went in. Not a lot of dialogue. No, there isn't. Once the film had ended, they made a beeline for the box office again. Again, they thanked me for the recommendation and decided to spend a few more minutes having a chat. We weren't expecting to hear our accent all this way from home. <laughs> One of them home? said. <laughs> what is it that brings you to our area? I asked. Oh, no. Well, well oh, the other wow. one explained. We're playing, in, we're playing Scotland this weekend in the rugby. The rugby? <laughs> because the reason they looked like rugby players was that they were, in fact, actual rugby, rugby players, players. Yeah. not just that but they were players from the south african rugby union team they oh, were wow. the Springboks. i wished them well with their game <laughs> they but said they didn't need to worry south africa never has to worry here <laughs> we are too strong <laughs> wow I don't know. I don't, where are we I don't going know where now this is going. <laughs> where are we now <laughs> they, i apologize <laughs> the they were soon to be encouraged and left heads high However, I feel I might have misled them and through them the entire South African rugby team. You see, Scotland took them to the cleaners. Scotland won 21-6. 
So I feel as I, I need to take this opportunity to apologise to the entire 2002 South African Rugby Union team. <laughs> I don't know which two of the players came in that I interacted with, not being much of a rugby fan, but, uh, but I fear I might have lost them the match. My charade was not intended as mocking. Mm. Rather, it was motivated by cowardice at the thought of being on the receiving end of a rugby tackle by two angry rugby players. I hope I can be forgiven. Uh, I leave it in your hands and the hands of the hopefully very forgiving listeners. I did my best. What can I say? Yes. Uh, it's not, it's not one of my strong ones. Um, <laughs> really? Sister you wouldn't have known. Susie, thank you. Sister Susie, what do you say to well, Gavin? I've got a few things here. What were they doing in the cinema two days in a row? Eating you know, snacks. Didn't they have snacks. better things to do? Yes. Shouldn't they have been training, getting yes. ready for the match? Correct. I, I kind of don't want to forgive you because I feel like you were a little bit mean, but I did like the accent and it gave me a good giggle. So why not, Gavin? I'll, get, I'll, I'll forgive you on I this feel, occasion. I feel exhausted. <laughs> Brother Matthew, what would you recommend? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, once you've gone down that road, there's no going back. Is he, He's absolutely right. Once you'd start with it, there's no way you could then change. You go, oh, I was just a little joke. Uh, please don't hit me. Uh, so, yes, definitely forgiven. Well done, Gavin. And uh, please, please do write in with more confessions involving those kind oh, of accents. No, I feel as though that's uh, right. not those kind of accents. Uh, yeah. People's forgiveness. Do you forgive on the people's verdict? 6105. Five, four. First word is Simon. Forgive Gavin. Yes or no? 61054 on the text. On tonight's confession, it featured Gavin, who uh, thought his South African accent was pretty good. Uh, and then two South Africans came to the cinema where he was working and they played for the South African rugby team, who then went to, on to lose against Scotland. And Gavin thinks he might have been responsible for that. But anyway, it did uh, feature a stellar South African accent, I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's check in with the people's verdict. Here it comes. Okay, so Ray in Hornchurch says, Forgiven, great confession from the bits that I heard, as me and my wife were in pieces laughing at the attempt at the accent. <laughs> but we've had bags of replies from South African expats. Okay, uh, So Sorry. C. Van Dyke says, Not forgiven. You jinxed the box squad. Uh, Frank says, Oh, forgiven. Absolutely. Mainly because, Simon, your accent was utterly appalling yes. and absolutely hilarious to us Bocky supporters living in the UK. I did apologise. In fact, and finally, Russell in London says, not forgiven, Simon. I'm a South African living in London for 20 years. I went up to Edinburgh for that very match <laughs> to watch my beloved box lose to Scotland for the first time in our proud history. I knew something was up with that squad and finally, I know now what caused that shocking result. It was Gavin. It was Gavin yeah. that caused it, but he does get a smart speaker and if you have a confession for us, uh, maybe it involves uh, the cinema, maybe it involves dodgy accents, who knows? Maybe it's a South African confession. What do you have for us? Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk.